What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I am obviously not in the Bay Area, which is where most of my videos come from. I'm actually in the Jackson area of Wyoming, not quite in the Grand Tetons because uh, there, there are no Tetons right now. I don't know if you can see that or not. What's up, Jacob? What's up, man? Yeah, no, no mountains right now. So we're kind of like going up and down. We're going to be exploring this area today, photographing some wildlife, anything that we can find that is ground level because in the winter out here, there is really intense cloud coverage on the Tetons. It's pretty rare to see them out here in the winter time. I've been here a couple of times in the winter and I've, I think one day out of all the times I've been here, we've had a clear view. We're on the north side of Jackson Hole right now. We found a herd of bison in the snow. They are pretty far Far away so thankfully I rented this 100 to 400 for my Leica SL2S. I'm gonna shoot a little footage of these guys out here in the snow maybe grab some photos too but the big thing today as we wander around looking for wildlife I'm gonna try to take photos today of wildlife that are far away because we obey the rules of nature and the rules of you know wildlife which is don't go close to them with my rangefinder with this Apo 1 35 tele lens that I rented. 135 on a rangefinder is kind of insane, but I figured with the SL2S having very limited megapixels to really crop in, the M11 has 61 megapixels, and we'll just see what happens. What's up, Jacob? What's up? <laughs> okay, now I gotta introduce you to Jacob. This is my friend Jacob. What's going on, everybody? Jacob came out here to help with the video that we just did on the Wind River. Today, we are just gonna explore the area. Jacob's never been in weather like this. Breezy, I'm a California boy. This is super cold out here, super, super cold. It's really not that bad. <laughs> Okay, so we kicked off our day here at this bison herd on the north side of Jackson Hole, but we're gonna start driving south towards Jackson and continue our quest to find some wildlife and also just good scenery in general. So one thing about me is that my wildlife spotting game is on point. It's on point, right? That was that was really good. Uh, we just found an eagle kind of off in the distance. Got the SL2S focused on him, getting a little video footage. I am at 400 times 1.4, so what's that, like five something, and it's still far away. But I'm gonna try to see how this goes on the 135. I am having a lot of fun trying to make this 135 on the M11 work for wildlife. I'm excited to hear what you guys think about the images.
All right, so we're here at the National Elk Refuge. This is an area known for like the sheep and the elk, sometimes some other animals as well. We got here, there's a couple people here and not a lot of people are showing up. I'm also noticing this lens that I rented uh, from Lens Rental is not calibrated. As I've been shooting all day on it, all of the pictures are soft focus. I think it's back focusing because even at infinity, unfortunately, it's not quite working. I'm using the back of the screen to try to negate that. Kind of hard shooting wildlife on the back of the screen. Look at this guy here, look at that. Look at that. That's a good boy. All right, so we're here in Grand Teton National Park because the sky opened up a little bit and we thought we'd come do this trail, Taggart Lake. Doing a bit of a minimal pack out. I've got the M11 with the 35 Sumalux. I also brought the 50 Lux and I've got my M6 with some, I believe, Tri-X film in it with the 28 Sumacron. So I'm gonna try to get that whole roll of film shot. So we're gonna do a little hiking here. Got the snowshoes, got Jacob. Got my smart water. Got the smart water for that high elevation electrolytes. All we need now are mountains. That's all we need. Okay, and a fun turn of events, Jacob is gonna shoot my Leica M6. Jacob, have you ever shot a Leica camera before? No, it's first time, first time. All right, you ever shot a rangefinder? No. All right, you've shot a camera though, right? I've shot my iPhone. He's gonna finish up the roll of film that's in my film camera. We're gonna judge him by the shots and they're gonna be epic. That's one fancy selfie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very fancy. Are you with the uh, park service? Yeah, uh, oh. yeah. Follow also, are you, are you heading up the trail? Yeah, straight up, uh, up to the lake. Awesome. Uh, I don't think I have time to circle it today, but you can walk around the south side of it and come down the far side. It okay. It's a longer walk coming back. I will tell you that. Yeah, I think we're just going to go in and out uh, today. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the best way to do it. There are two ways in and two ways out on this side. Most people will follow the sign that says to the trail. Ahead of you, you will see a fairly steep hill. Yep. Uh, I remember that hill. You can go up that way also. Yeah. I'm going to go the other way just because most people go that way. I think that's a good idea. But Do we have to worry about bears at all? No. That's what, see, Jacob, you're going to be okay. No okay, bears. Good, no good, bears. Good, good. Uh, My friend Jake was been a little stressed out about terrified. no bears. Well, first uh, time, first time in Wyoming. All right. Well, now the, uh, <laughs> the the bear story is this: from about the first of December on, or the first good snow on, and we've had at least one good snow, and not as many as usual. The bears are all they're not asleep, but they're not going to bother you because they're not going to leave their dens. And the first the earliest you have to worry about it is sometimes you'll see a bear, uh, but not very often, early in March. Yeah. So normally they're not out. They're not out until end of March. March, beginning of April. They're mainly interested at that time of year in eating and yeah. what, because haven't eaten all winter, what they mainly eat, because remember they've been, they've, they've lost a lot of weight and they're tired. They're looking for carcasses. Yeah. They're not interested in the things that may run away because it's much too hard work for them. Right, so so Jacob. And I'm quick. It's gonna be okay, man. I'm quick. So no bears, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> Just remember, remember one thing now, the bears are quicker than you are. They so are. once they're up and around and they're wide awake, they can walk faster than us, they can run faster than us, and they can swim faster than us. And depending on what kind of a bear they are, don't climb up a tree. If it's a regular black bear, which is the overwhelming likelihood of what you'll see, they climb trees very well. Grizzlies, not so much. The young ones do, but the grizzlies lose their ability to climb trees as they get older. Uh, and because their claws are adapted for digging, people think of them as great hunters. What they mainly eat... They're scavengers, right? Like, they're scavengers. And the other thing they eat are grubs roots, bugs. If you ever see a rotten tree that looks like somebody put a bomb in it, it's been a bear pulling it apart for oh, the wow. bugs inside. They also eat these funny little moths that come out in the middle of the summer. I remember one year I was working up at one of the lakes here in, in the early summer and we ran into a, a leg from a very young deer. So oh my that, gosh. Happened. that happened. So uh, the rest well, of the deer was missing, but the leg was still around. 
Well, thanks for sharing everything. You have a good hike. All right, take care. I love him and I want him to be my grandfather. Right? I feel way better knowing there's no bears out right now. So. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be just Let's fine. Let's do it. Uh, so anyway, Jacob's gonna shoot my M6. That's what we were talking about, right? Yep, yep. All right, so I'm gonna set Jacob up with the M6 right now. All right, Jacob, this is it. I'm gonna set it up for you, okay? So all you have to do is point and mostly just shoot. Let me get it all dialed in for you. Cool, I want you to hold on to this. Okay, so when you look through the viewfinder, mm -hmm. you're gonna see two images. I'm gonna mess it up for you. So take a look at like the tree, okay. through the viewfinder. And okay. do you see how there's two images? They're not lined up? Here, yeah, here. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Jacob's rocking my uh, my fancy photography mm -hmm. glove. Okay. All right, so when you put, you got your finger up there, okay, on yeah. the, and then you get put your other hand on the lens on the bottom. Can you feel the tab? Yeah. There's a tab. When you slide that tab, it'll start parallaxing the images together. So go ahead and try it. So just take a look through it and just move the lens around, move that tab around, feel the tab on the bottom. It's better to just grab the tab like that. And now when you bring the images together, you see how it works? Hold on, you're spinning the aperture. Hold up, hold up. Whoa, whoa. Wrong I thought, thing. I thought it was parallaxing. This tab right here. Oh, okay, okay. okay. You're gonna spin that tab. Yeah, yeah. Do you see the little box inside the box? Yeah. So move that tab and watch how things get blurry inside that box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, so when they come right. together, it's in focus. This one? Yeah, push the button. There it is. Perfect. Now take it down and then crank the film. Go ahead and advance the film. Old school. Okay. All the way. And snap it back. Okay, cool. Now it's locked and it's ready for your next shot. Shot of you, dude. All right, let's go. Relax. Yeah, let's get rolling. We gotta get to Tiger Lake. All right, so we're about halfway down the trail. Jacob's killing it, popping off these black and white film photos. Boom, boom. Pretty soon he's gonna be rolling around with the Zone Leica using my affiliate code so I get 4% back. If you ever need any gear, be sure to hit up the links below. Every little thing helps, you know? So a quick little pro tip, when you're in a harsh midday lighting or even mixed lighting like today, which is kind of mixing between overcast clouds, bright sunlight, and you're shooting in snow, two things I try to do, number one is expose to the right just a little. You don't try to underexpose, you expose to the right just a little. Use your histogram if you have that. If not, shoot a touch overexposed. That will actually lower the contrast a little bit and push the snow a little brighter, which makes the images just look a little more natural so you don't have this like heavy shadow, heavy brights, like super contrasted look. The second thing is consider shooting in black and white in scenes like this. Shoot black and white and bring down the light of the blue channel and you can get a really popping sky. Or if you're shooting on black and white film or with a monochromatic sensor, use like a red filter. That can give you some really stark looks in a scene like this. Pro tip for Dave. All right, so we made it up here to Tiger Lake. First time for Jacob, what do you think? Oh, yeah. oh man, it's beautiful, it was a good hike. Having fun with this Leica, learning a lot about it. What do you call it when you put the images together? Parallax. Parallax. Oh, parallax. Over here, parallaxing, yeah. I'm liking it, liking it. This view is unreal. If you ever get a chance to come to the Tetons any time of year, this is like such an easy hike. I've done this hike with my family, my kids have done this hike without complaining too much. So be sure to put this on your list.
Taggart Lake is beautiful, but we gotta get back down the mountain so that we can head over to the barns and try to hike out there for sunset. So we will see you guys down the mountain. All right, guys, we're here. The sky just keeps getting better and better for the first time since we've been here. And we've been here a couple of days now. We're actually seeing Grand Teton. It's beautiful. All right, if you're not familiar, the barns out here, every other season, you can just drive up, park, go experience them in the winter time. You gotta park a little over a mile away, throw on some snowshoes, and then walk to the barns. The pros of this, nobody's out here. We're getting here now, we just walked in, 15, 20 minute walk, and there's not a single person out here at the barns. The cons are that you do have to walk in the snow, it's a little cold, and because you're on this like, big field, the wind can become a problem. Uh, it's definitely windy right now, not terrible. Last time I did this though, a couple years ago, when we were walking back after sunset, it was very windy and very miserable. Not all it's cracked up to be. So here we are, we made it. Where's, where's Jacob? Jacob, what happened? I'm out of film, yeah. Like the perfect shot. All right, well, I got more. So you guys know it's really important to me that we can be real on this channel, keep it authentic, and inspire one another. So I just had this interaction. As I'm shooting, another couple walked up. And it's their first time here, they were kind of geeking out. But then they saw me, they got really aware that I'm out here with this camera, this camera, this bag, Jacob's over there having the time of his life with the M6. They didn't want to get in my way. So they were like, scared to approach something they were excited about because they wanted to make sure they didn't get in my way. And if I can be honest with you, I'm in their way. <laughs> they're out here having this incredible experience and they're so stoked about it. Photographers, we should move in the shadows and stay out of the way. Too many people, especially like those that are chasing that influencer thing, they get to a location and they make it all about themselves. I think the true art of photography is when you can move around a scene, find your compositions, and keep everyone else from even caring. You're not the center of attention, you're there to capture the center of attention. And in this case, this barn, this spot, this beautiful mountain range that has finally showed up, this is what it's about. So if you're out there, you gotta shoot plans, you're going somewhere cool to shoot, stay out of people's way. Let everybody have their experience and you move quietly and off on the side, you find your compositions. Don't make it all about you. All right, guys, we're heading back to Jackson. Tomorrow we're hopping on a plane and heading back to the Bay Area. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Be sure to give Jacob a follow. Thanks for watching. See you next time.